In today's video, we're talking about speed rings. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, the first video of 2022, in fact. Um, I haven't made a video for around about three weeks, which is really unusual for me, but I came down with COVID and it hit me pretty hard. Uh, so I was in really no condition to make any videos, but I'm uh, pretty much back to normal now, so it's back to work. So today's video is going to be about speed rings. That's uh, these little guys over here. And I'm making this video because I've just become aware that a lot of people don't know what these are or what they're used for. So a speed ring is used to attach any light modifier to your lights. I've got a couple of different lights here. This is a strobe, it's an Ellen Chrome strobe, and this is a continuous light, it's an Aperture 120D. And both of these lights used different mounting mechanisms in order to put a light modifier on them. So just to show you what I'm talking about, this is the mechanism that is used by Ellen Chrome. Uh, this here is the mechanism that is used for Bowens, which is this one over here. So if you look at these, they're actually quite different. One's a lot bigger than the other, but you'll notice that the Bowens uses these little notches in here to, um, these little protruding notches here to hook up onto the light itself. And while the Allen Chrome uses these little cutouts in the, uh, in the speed ring in order to be able to mount. Uh, in fact, let me just show you. So this is the Bowens uh, system. So if I was to mount this, onto here, I just line up the notches there, I lock it in place, and that's in there. Uh, if I wanted to mount the speed ring that I've got, this is an Allen one, obviously it doesn't fit. Um, and it's the same thing for the Allen Chrome system. I wouldn't be able to mount this reflector onto the light because it just doesn't fit. So the, the, the fitting mechanisms are just so different uh, that they won't work with each other. And now luckily there are only really about four systems that are being used today. You've got the Bones system, uh, you've got the uh, Pro Photo system, you've got Bron Color, and then you've got Allen Chrome as well. There's a few other different ones as well, uh, but for the most part, they're the four that are being used today. So this is really important because if you're buying a light modifier, you need to make sure that it fits onto the lighting system that you're using. Now, the reason I started making this video was because I was talking to some people and it became apparent to me that they think that the speed ring that comes with your softbox is a permanent thing that only fits that softbox. And once you put it in there, you can't remove it. And that's just not the case. So what I'm gonna show you now is an example of how you would fit the same softbox onto two different types of lighting systems. So let me clear all this up and we'll go through that. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to mount this softbox here. This is a strip box and I wanna mount it onto this aperture light, which has got a Bowens mount. I would need a Bowens mount speed ring on the softbox. So then, uh, which is what I've got here, you can see the three protruding notches and you can see the cutouts there. So all I've gotta do is just line this up and then give it a quick lock. Just, you just spin it and then that will lock in place. So that's not going anywhere, that's, that's in there. So let me just unlock this again. So let's say that now I wanted to mount this onto my Allen Chrome. Well, that's not going to fit there because the mounting system is different. So what I need to do is I need to change the speed ring on this box to the Allen Chrome one, which is this one here. Now these two here, they're exactly the same model. They're made, they're made by Allen Chrome, but they make a different, um, uh, so the speed ring is the same. It's just that the back is different so that they have the different types of mounting systems. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to change the speed ring on that softbox, and I'm gonna put this one in so we can mount it onto the Allen Chrome. And guys, just in case you're not aware of this, in order to remove a speed ring or even to just put one of the soft boxes together, they made up all this, uh, this they've got these rods uh, in there which stretches out the material. One end goes into one of these notches here, okay? And then the other one, there's another little notch in there. And basically, it's just a little bit of brute force. You just have to pull these rods out um, using a bit of strength. Um, there it goes. So that rod's come out. Once you get one out, it does become easier. Um, and essentially, these are the rods. Um, I've dropped one here, but you've got, there we go. So these are the rods. It's just a matter of swapping out the speed ring, putting that one in there. 
Okay, and this is a uh, this is more of a universal speed ring made by Allen Chrome. The reason I like these is because they've got eight notches, so you can fit. Um, one of the octa boxes, so you've got your eight. You can do strip boxes, so you can do just the top two and top bottom, or you can do square boxes as well, so you can just put, like say, that one, that one, and that one, and that one there. That would be for a square box. Uh, for, a, like I said, a strip box, you would do, say, that one, and that one there, so that that's what we're gonna use for this box here. Uh, but if you had an Octobox, you would just use all of them. So again, uh, I'll explain to you why these flip up and down in a second. Um, in fact, let me explain that to you now. In the old way of putting together a softbox, the speed rings would look like that. Um, so these don't have any moving parts. And what you would do is you would put the rod in there, okay, like so. And then you would put that into the edge of the softbox and you would just do that for all the different, for the four different corners. That's really hard to do. Um, it's difficult to do quickly. Um, I'm used to it now, so I can get one of these together in probably under a minute, but uh, it does take a long time and it is quite finicky. This system here that Ellen Chrome has now come out with, and it's not just Ellen Chrome, a lot of other companies have these like Godox and so forth. Um, it's a lot easier and uh, because they flip up and down. So let me put that together and I'll show you the difference that these uh, move, moving um, uh, components make. Now, I'm just stopping here for a second. Uh, what I wanted to point out was when you're putting one of these together, one of the easiest ways to do it, I found, is to do them diagonally. So I put this rod in here now. Um, sometimes if I try to put this one here, it'll pop that one out of place, or if I do that one there. So I do the opposing ones, and it does make it a little bit easier for the material to stay in place. Okay, I finished recording this video and then I just realized that I didn't explain to you why uh, these little notches that move, why that's important. And uh, the reason is that, again, in the old ways, the, the way that you used to mount or put together a softbox was you've got your speed ring and then you've got these little notches, as I explained before, you would have to put the rods in there and then put the whole thing together as you saw me doing in the time lapse. Um, once you tear it down and you, you have to put it again. It can actually take a long time to do. So uh, what these little flippy things do, and again, this is not just an online Chrome uh, system, Aperture do this and uh, I think Godox do it as well. Uh, but what it allows you to do is to tear this down really, really quickly by pulling apart. Uh, all you gotta do is just pull these little notches out. It's actually quite easy to do, but you have to do it on a hard surface, so all I'm doing is just pulling them out and then the softbox is ready to be packed down. When you want to put it back together again, all you got to do is just lay it flat again, click the little things in place and it's ready to go again. So you, they just pop out or they pop in as well. So um, I just wanted to record that bit again and insert it into the video. So now back to the regular video. Okay, so this is now fully assembled and it's ready to be mounted onto the Allen Chrome light. Um, as you can see, the only thing has changed is just that the speed ring is different. And with the Allen Chrome, uh, you've got these little cutouts um, in, the, in the metal in here that you need to line up with some notches that you probably can't see that there's a couple of little notches, plastic notches in there. So you just line these up. Uh, like so and again it's just twist and then that's locked in place and then with the Allen Chrome ones have a locking system in there so that is now safely secured uh, onto the light itself um, the other thing that I wanted to show you was inside of the speed ring uh, you'll find these little screws sometimes, well, pretty much all the time uh, with the Allen Chrome they've got these white ones in here, they're just screws um, and with some of the other brands, it'll just be like a regular screw. It'll look something like that. Uh, but what this does is when you've got that tightened, uh, that's not going anywhere. That is prevents any sort of spin. But when you loosen them up, what it allows you to do is to spin the speed ring whilst the back uh, stays secure. And the reason you want to do that is because sometimes, so normally uh, a strip box, let's say, you know, you're, you're shooting this way, but then you may want to turn uh, the light somewhat at a different angle. Now, 
if you don't want to be, what you can do is you can actually just loosen the, the, the light stand and you can try and sort of, you know, get the light in the right spot and so forth. But that can take a lot of time. So instead, what you can do is, uh, you can see that this one here has got the screw on the front. Maybe you can see that. I uh, hope you can see that. Anyway, when you loosen that up now, you can actually spin the light, but can you see that the, the light itself will remain stationary, but you can actually get this and move it to the desired angle without having to loosen up uh, anything on the light stands. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you. Again, it was because I saw somebody buy multiple uh, softboxes with multiple speed rings because they thought that once the speed ring was inserted onto the, the, the softbox that you couldn't change it. And as you can see, that's, uh, that's, it's actually quite easy to change uh, speed rings. So what you can do instead of buying multiple softboxes is you can just get a few of these speed rings I recommend the Allen Chrome ones because then you can just change them. And even though it is an Allen Chrome speed ring, Allen Chrome themselves will sell the ones with the uh, Pro Photo uh, attachment at the back, or Bowens, or uh, you know Allen Chrome, or whatever you want. They've got multiple different. Um, uh, they've got pretty much everything covered. So then you only have a few collection of. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. And again, this came about because I was talking to someone who bought multiple softboxes with speed rings because they thought that you couldn't interchange them. And uh, it just becomes a really, it's a lot more expensive to buy the... the <clears throat> anyway, that's everything. Anyway, that's everything I wanted to show you. Um, and again, this video came about because talking to someone uh, that went and bought out multiple softboxes because they thought that they needed uh, a, one softbox and a speed ring of each type in order to be able to use, you know, they needed one setup for Allen Chrome, one setup for Bowens and so forth. And that's just not the case. You can just buy a few of these uh, different speed rings with the different adapters in the back, and then you can use that softbox onto uh, multiple different systems. For example, uh, for my headshots, I've switched over from flash uh, to using continuous lights. So I used to use these lights, these Allen Chrome ones, and I'm now using the aperture lights uh, because I find that better. In fact, that's a whole new video. If you want to know why I think continuous light is better for headshots, uh, then just leave me a comment in the in the in the section below, and I'll I'll make a video about that. But uh, the fact is that it does cut uh, cut down on costs because I only need uh, one set of soft boxes uh, that I can just change the speed ring and then attach that to any system that I want to attach it to. Anyway, I hope that that made sense. But if you've got any questions uh, or any comments, really, uh, the comment section below is probably the best place to get in touch with me. Otherwise, you can reach out through any of the usual social media platforms. You're going to find all the links in the description. Now, if you like this video, it would mean the world to me if you could click the like button. It really makes a difference to me. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. I make videos like this every week to help you with your photography. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those videos, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And also a reminder, if you haven't checked out ministryofphoto.com, uh, make sure you do go check it out. That's the website that I run where uh, I have all sorts of photography resources. There's reviews, there's articles, there's blogs, uh, as well as uh, freebies that you can download, things like uh, Lightroom uh, presets, things like that. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, it's completely free. Make sure you check it out, www.ministryofphoto.com. So that's everything for this first video of 2022. Again, please don't forget to click the like button. I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.